Okay guys, what's up? I am going to be doing a showing you every single piece of thing that's involved in my covers. Every single thing that's going that either is or is going to be involved in my covers. So right away you can see that there's a lot of equipment here. There's three guitars, two basses, three effects pedals and four amplifiers. You see a couple things up there that you may not see. There's a ukulele over there too, but... So, sorry, I got some allergies. But what we're going to go into is we're going to go into... Let me... This is a... Here's a disclaimer. About maybe 75% of this equipment is not owned by me. I'm actually borrowing most of this equipment maybe 65 percent of it everything you see on top of the amplifiers is mine on top of the amplifiers so about might have to say about 50 percent of the things here well about 45 percent of the things here are actually my equipment no, 35, but we'll get to that in a bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate the equipment I use in my, in my covers. This is part one. This is going to be a three-part video. In part one, I'm going to be telling you how to, um, about the equipment. Part two, I'm going to be demonstrating some of the equipment. And it, there may be a part three, I'm not sure. I'm going to be demonstrating the part, equipment in part two. So what we're going to do first is I'm going to show you the guitars. First one is a night. I got the year wrong on some of these guitars, but the first one's a 1995 Fender Stratocaster, Mexican. It's a Mexican Stratocaster. It's got a maple neck with a vintage gloss um, finish on it. It's got normal fender. It's this is almost all this is all original except for the strings. I just changed the strings 2 months ago, but I dropped my Bluetooth speaker. I'll get to that in this video. It's got a maple neck. It's got a alder body. It's got a um It's got a fender style thing. It's got a um plastic white pick guard. It's red with a steel bridge and everything. So that's the Stratocaster. Next is a Telecaster. It's got a um maple neck and an alder body just like the Stratocaster. This is a 2001 one. I did that by looking up the serial numbers which are right here. And then I got the um, blue, the dark blue. It's got the dark blue paint. This is also my dad's. I haven't strung it all the way yet, but I'm going to soon, and I'm going to be using it in a cover. It's got the normal Telecaster neck and Telecaster bridge pickup. Three-way switch. Tone and volume. The Stratocaster's got a five-way switch. And it's got... Oh, that's a hoagie sale. Yeah, the fire company's having a Yahogi sale today. They go blaring the fucking horn. But, uh, anyways, the third guitar I have that I'm using, borrowing, also my dad's, is a acoustic Applause Summit series. It's got a bridge made from, I think, ro either rosewood or mahogany or something it may be Shadua but it's also got a rosewood fingerboard with a maple neck it's got a fiberglass body not a wooden body it's got normal acoustic strings on it it's got the uh, it's basically supposed to be an ovation guitar I think this is an ov ovation is it yeah by ovation Right in the sound hole, you some get acoustics have a sticker on the inside of the guitar that tells you this is an acoustic 
electric guitar, meaning you can plug it into an amp and play it. So next is the bass guitars. Okay, so this is my Franken bass. This is called a Franken bass because it's made from a lot of different parts. It was originally white, as you can see in one of my Life Memories videos of me unboxing it for the first time. I've already unboxed it, but this is me going through it. I made the video five minutes after I um unboxed it. But, as you can see, I've done a lot of modifying it. I painted it, the first time I modified it, I painted it blue and lacquered the neck. And then stuck um, knobs from this amplifier right here that doesn't even work, but stuck knobs on it. Now, just a, and now just a couple months ago, maybe th three months ago, I just painted it red. I bought a gold hardware for it, all except for the neck plate, but it's got a, all, everything is gold on it, and lacquered the neck again, I put in, um, block inlay stickers on it, like a vintage base, it's got no strap buttons, but recently some problem happened with it, which is why I haven't been using it that much, you see that, that's a crack. The strings literally pull with enough force to crack the neck pocket on this bass guitar. This is my bass right here. This is the first instrument I'm going to show you that's mine. Me and my dad both have own three of these instruments. I own the two basses and this ukulele. My dad owns these guitars. But it's got a maple, standard maple neck with a glossy finish on it. It's got a balsa wood body, which means it's so poorly balanced. Watch when I pick it up. Boom, the neck starts to dive. This is the center of gravity on most... Right there, I just let it drop. The neck is um so poorly balanced. But it's got a, a rosewood fingerboard. It's got pretty good stuff on it. It's got a Standard plastic pick guard. It's got gold steel parts on it. It had aluminum or something on it. That sh crappy shit on it. So that's about it for this bass. It also has a tone and volume knob and a single precision pickup. Made by Crescent. So this is another bass guitar I just got that I'm making monthly payments on. It's an Epiphone Thunderbird 4. It's got all black hardware. It has no modifications on it. And it's not going to be modified because this is my... This is a really expensive bass and for my taste. It's got... I think this is a either rosewood or ebony fingerboard. That's either rosewood or ebony. Most likely rosewood. Because I don't think there's going to be an ebony fingerboard on a beginner's bass. Or what Epiphone calls a begin, they called it a beginner's bass. But this is a Thunderbird, not a crappy forty-dollar bass like the one I just showed you is. It's got a cellulose pick guard. It's got two volume knobs and a t single tone knob. It's got two power pickups, a single jack, three-point bridge, twenty frets. It might be twenty. I'm not sure. I think it's twenty-one, but. It's got die cast steel tuners and bridges. It's got a truss plate on it. It's got the 60s scale width on at the nut. To make it look like a neck through, they flattened off the bottom. And they have it like this. So you see how the fingerboard extends over where the neck is. This is a bolt-on neck. And they fixed the neck dive problem. By putting the strap button on the back of the neck plate. Now this one doesn't have a flat bottom on its body. So it has to be on a guitar stand in order to stand up correctly. This one I really don't give a shit about the neck. Because I'm replacing the neck as well. So that's it for the bass guitars. I recently broke a string on this like yesterday. And I put a three month old 
it's been on a base for three months and then it's been in my in a box for for five more I have a video on how to get a old string to sound like this but this string has a, is gonna have a longer life because of that so next are the I'm gonna show you are the amplifiers first one is one of my amplifiers I bought this for seventy one dollars it's not a very very good amplifier but it is from a very good company Ibanez it's an Ibanez IBZ 10 B the B stands for bass it's got a power power light a power button with a red light on it I don't think I have it plugged in correctly but I have it plugged in it might not even be plugged in at all might have unplugged it but it's got a um headphone jack quarter inch headphone jack it's got CD um input or mp3 player if you have an mp3 player and a a quarter inch to three and if you have some adapters to um fix it to make your um amp three millimeter three point five millimeter compatible then it's got a volume um a volume knob presence knob which makes the bass guitar kind of acts like a combination between a vo buff between a volume knob and a reverb knob. I got the three band equalizer. It's got an input. And if you tip the amp over a little bit, you see that it's a closed back model. It's got a removable. That's probably why it won't turn on. But it's got the model right here. It's got the serial number right here. It's got all its info right here. Got a nice plethora of warnings on there. But, yep, this one turns on. It's because the back wasn't plugged in. But you got a nice blue light there. Next thing I'm going to show you, this amplifier doesn't even work for some reason. I, bu I bought it and I was disappointed to find out it didn't work. I contacted the company that came from socialdailydeals.com three times. This one won't fire up. It's not even plugged in, but it's a California amplifier. I thought California was a good company. It's got a headphone jack, it's got a three band EQ, it's got a booster here because this is also meant for bass. It's got a volume knob, it's got gain. I think that's for distortion or something. I'm not really too acquainted on what a gain knob is, but it's got its phase thing. I'm not really sure what all this crap is, but it's got information on it flip it around it's got a, nothing on it it's got a little five six inch speaker the other one's got like a five or a four the Ibanez got maybe a six inch or eight inch speaker but here's all its information and a caution the risk of electric shock do not open chassis surface hot now probably now the reason why this amplifier was so cheap about twenty fifteen dollars is because it's got a normal household plug it's got a normal household plug it does not plug into a um it does not have a ground wire like all the rest of these amplifiers do I contacted the company three times for a replacement I was get they said they were gonna send me a shipping label to send the old one in but it never came, so I'm stuck with this piece of shit now because the warranty's out of um date. Next amp I'm going to show you is my dad's Line 6 Spider 3. It's probably the biggest amp right now that I got. Power button. It's got a pedal. Uh, it's got an Ethernet pedal thing that takes the Ethernet cable. Headphones or recorder out. This is a recording amp. Sorry, I'm so shaky. I'm holding with one hand. CD MP3 in. Master volume. It's got two um, control effects. If you tap this twice, 
you got to tap it twice according to how much space you want between the modulation and stuff. It's got a three band, it's got a channel volume. Channel volume dictates how loud the, the, the how loud these are. Treble, mid, and bass. That's a three band EQ. It's got drive, which drive basically dictates how much distortion you get on each of these channels. Then it's got the guitar input. Now I use this amplifier. I used to use it for the bass guitar because it's got a it's got the correct um speaker for a bass guitar. Now if you put a bass head on this, you're gonna turn the cone inside out and fucking rip the hell out of it. But we got maybe is the I'm not sure if that's a ten or fifteen inch speaker. Spider two. Oh, it's a twelve inch. Right there it says 12. But on the back it's an open box. You can see it's got a, um, an up, you can see it might not, this might not even be a, its original speaker, but it's got a, there goes my Bluetooth, shell Celestian cone. It's got a Celestian, um, yeah, it's the original speaker. It's got this, it's got all its information on here. It's got the UPC code right there, meaning I can scan it. And if I wanna buy a new one I can for myself, I can scan it and, and find it online. Next, we're gonna to go to the Fender Performer 650. The 650 Performer has a power button with a power light. Now I don't play bass through this because this is the most expensive amp my dad has. It's a, a, and it's an actual stage amplifier. This one's got a reverb knob, a foot switch knob because it has a foot switch that comes with it. I don't have it out right now but it's got a loose jack here. It's got a f drive select because this has two drivers. It's got two, basically this is two amplifiers. One for the foot switch and one for the other thing. Now I don't know how you switch between the drivers fast, but it's got a vol, it's got a volume, it's got a volume for this driver, a volume for that one. It's got a two, three band EQs got an input jack it's got a humongous thing it's got vacuum tube this is a very old classic this is a fender usa this is not a mexican fender like the guitars so i don't play bass through this amp i try to be as careful as i can for the, i don't want to knock it down or place it on the ukulele because that'll damage the amp screw the uke the amp, amp is my number one it's got a real Fender gigantic speaker with a huge magnet on it. Uh, how big is this speaker size? Where's the speaker size? Doesn't have a speaker size, but it's 120 at 60 hertz, 200 watts. I don't know what this is for, but it's got little things on it. It's got a cord, th very thick cord. That's how you can tell it's not a cheap amp. It's got a set an effects looper here. Guitar. And then there's line. It's got a return. You stick your your effects in, in here. And then it's and you pull and then you take them out here. You got line out, you got um sends. This is basically, I don't know how to describe this, but basically you gotta, you can um, change it between your um, stuff. You can change the tone of your guitar, uh, apparently you can change the tone of your guitar through that, with that switch, but next thing I'm going to show you is the ukulele. Now this I got for $10 maybe, I'm not sure when I, how much I got it for. I'm going to be modifying this ukulele to look awesome. Or at least what I, as awesome as I can get it to look. 
which is not really going to be much. I may be repaint. I may be putting faux bindings on it. I got an introduction to the to the fix online here on YouTube. But I got it at a music store, a good music store. Same music store I was going to get that jazz bass and the same music store you've seen me do. Where's that speaker that just fell back? There it is. Same music store you saw me um playing that Fender Jazz 77 in. But I'm running out of time here, so I got to go quick. I got... Next is my dad's. This is another one. All three of these pedals are my dad's. We got a DOD Icebox foot pedal. It's got a stereo input. I mean a stereo output. It's got an output here. It's got a output right here. This is if you have um, two separate amplifiers you want to play through. <laughs> Now this is good for ba for getting Justin Chancellor tones because Justin Chancellor uses two separate outputs. But this turns it on and off. You got level, which determines the intensity of the effect. Speed, which is the speed of the um, whatever the hell it's called. It's of the stereo um, alternation, the depth, which is how hard it, do it um, does it, and the EQ. I think the EQ, um, I'm not really sure what that does, but we'll find out when I'm demonstrating it. I also got a DL DOD digital delay sampler. Level, again, it's got the repeat, which is the rate at which it repeats. The delay, which is the speed at which it deletes. What I mean, delay. I mean, repeats. It's got a um selector switch here for twenty five, fifty, one second, boom, bump, bump, four second, bump, bump. Then it's got infinite repeat. Which if I play one note, it's going to play that note over and over and over again. Remember that random loop, that song that I called Random Looper something, play along or something? Random Looper play along, I was using that. I don't know what this does, trig, maybe trigger or something. This might be trigger, like I might have to stomp the pedal to get it to, um... To repeat every time I step on the pedal, it'll repeat. Now I got sample here. Sample, I guess, does the same thing as infinite repeat. Except I play what I want to hear in there. And then I press on the pedal to sound it. But that's about it for that. It takes a 9 volt battery. It's got an input and an output. I got Proco Ret. Box. This is also my dad's. I got the level of distortion, the filter, and the volume. It's got a 9 volt input. A 9 volt input for plugging it into your rig or your pedal board or your power strip. It's got an input and output, and it's, I'm running it off of a 9 volt. This is uh, what I use to connect two of these pedals maybe usually the rat to the delay because I don't move the de rat and delay around too much the ice box I, I move a lot because when I'm playing tool music I um on the bass guitar I usually use that for some of the songs I also got two chords here to connect these boxes and connect to the amp I also have a chord that I own that came with the bass, as you can see, this $2 cord fucking snapped. I got, yeah, I did the ukulele. I also use a power strip here. The power strip. I use the power strip for, um, this. I also have a tuner here that runs on it. Now the thing about this tuner 
is you can turn it on and the screen is red it's got microphone mode and then you hit the it, you, it starts with clip mode hit the on and off again and you go to microphone mode and the screen is red when you turn it on and if you're out of tune you got red um you get a red screen if you're in tune the screen will turn green now i got it's got four modes here guitar for is g b is bass violin is um v and c is custom now many people think this thing is very inaccurate but you have to set the hertz right for normal tuning you would hit 440 and for jet for people think um i think there's lower tunings for it now 440 hertz just happens to be the tuning of a get, uh, of the a string so we got that then we got a capo here that i wrap around the that I wrap around the um neck of the guitar. This is the ones I bought this one because it doesn't damage your neck because these guitars again are not mine. The basses are. Next I got some rosin. It's a super sensitive music whatever string. Musical string company, rosin for violins, viola and cello. It's light number nine one one. Now you got the a box it comes in. I've already used it quite a bit. So there we got that. We also have the bow to go with the rosin. It's got a horse hair bow. It's got the normal white. It's a very cheap bow. It's made out of good wood and stuff. It's very cheap. But I use that. I have a video on how to use a bow on a guitar or a bass. I got my thing here. A Vivitar Bluetooth speaker in case I'm short on time and I have not enough time to hook to the computer. To hook up to the computer, so. I got that. I think I have more stuff here. I gotta check and see if I have more stuff here. I also got a 3.5 millimeter cable to plug into the computer. The camera I'm recording with is the Galaxy, the Samsung Galaxy S7's normal stock camera. I use the frontal or the normal camera, frontal for videotaping this stuff like this. First pick I use is the bass guitar pick. This is my pick I use on a bass guitar. Impact picks. It's a really heavy gauge pick. 12 mm precision pick. I use this very rarely on the instruments. This is a banjo pick. This is for guitar. It's a little lighter and I got one that I've built from a CD. Extremely light weight. It's good for electric guitars. And now you don't mind the tape and stuff here. That's from a video I just did before I um made this one. It's I can't say five minutes ago because this I'm so far about almost thirty minutes through the video here. I hope this will post on YouTube. I think I don't have a thing, but I also use a computer. I also use a computer. Um, I use a computer and the amp I play through is that one, the Line 6. The computer I use is right over here. As you can see, there's a cell phone charger plugged in. Oh no, that's not a cell. Here's a 3.5 millimeter auxiliary cord that I was telling you about. It's got an HP monitor running Windows 10. It's again my dad's computer, but I'm going to be getting an IBM computer to play my stuff through. So that's going to be mine. It's got a headphone jack and a um stuff. I could, I sometimes use the headphone jack. Sometimes I just stick the 3.5 right in the back. It's got a microphone jack, it's got two USB ports, it's got CD, an optical drive that you can't really see. It's a gateway running Windows 10. 
if we tip the computer, we got the cooler. We got the normal jacks here. We got HDMI for televisions. Four more USB ports, the monitor hookup, which is coming out because whoever hooked this computer up didn't screw it didn't um screw it in right. But we got ETH and the internet cable. We got some other plug there. I'm not sure what it is. Then we got two cable jacks, and then we got the three jacks. The center jack, a red, green, and blue. The center jack is for um, is where I plug the amp in most of the time. But that's about it for the computer. That's about it for the computer. I got a. It's an on keyboard you can buy these from Walmart you can buy them anywhere it's got a Dynex mouse uh, I use this for my covers my the music I play is from YouTube about pretty much that's pretty much covers the equipment I use that pretty much covers my equipment. Well, my equipment, my dad's equipment. The computer and all, and some of the amps and all the guitars, the core, some of the chords and the all the pedals are my dad's. Whereas I own the bass guitars, the two small amps, the ukulele, this chord, the Bluetooth, the um violin bow. The tuner, the rosin, the capo, and I'd have to say that's it. That's a microphone cord that I pulled out the back of the amplifier. I'm not even sure where that came from. That's pretty weird. That just fell over right there. But that just covers all of the thing. Sometimes I plug into right there. It's got multiple um, phone chargers in it that I use to charge the phones and the camera that I use, but that's about it. Have a nice day.